is to keep you fruitful. Praise the Lord. Because the moment that we seem to run out of fruit, we tend to run from God. So you need to thank God for the fruit. Hallelujah. Oh, you must not have no fruit, so you ain't got no reason to thank it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But I would be clapping my hands because it would indicate that I am connected to the vine. You can't have no fruit if you're not connected. Hallelujah. And if you say you have fruit, then you must be connected. Praise the Lord. We take so much for granted today. Praise the Lord. We think God has to do it. But no, his doing and his will for us is based on a condition. It ain't just grace and mercy. It's a condition. You read your Bible. He says, if you, then I will. He ain't going to just do it because you're human. He does it because you're connected to the vine. But we do bless God this morning. Thank God for Sister Gail. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord, I'm along with you on this weekend. Praise the Lord. When I go to run in some time, oh, honey, I think I'm going to just stay home. But praise the Lord, I was running. She said, I'm going to run with you. All right. Praise the Lord. She stuck in there with me. Had to drag me out of there last night. I got caught up. Praise the Lord. You know, when folks start plugging into you, your gifts goes into operation. Praise the Lord. I'm the wife been sitting in the car for 20 minutes and I'm just plugging in the folk. Praise the Lord. And I realized, praise the Lord, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, your wife is still in the car. Praise the Lord. Good thing she was reading her Bible. Praise the Lord. See, you got to do something in the meantime. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because I knew I was going to come back to what took you so long. Hallelujah. But when I'm operating, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I go into a Holy Ghost angle pit. Hallelujah. My gift is making room for me. Hallelujah. But she said, praise the Lord. And she graduated. Praise the Lord. Took out her Bible. And I knew she was tired. Praise the Lord. But uh, she knew I had plugged in. Hallelujah. And I guess it went wireless to her. Hallelujah. She said, let me get out my Bible because I don't even see him. Praise the Lord out here in Washington, D.C. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody get in the car with the door locks. But praise the Lord, the Lord kept her. She's a great running partner. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd love to take her with me. Right, honey, you going with me? Then I got to slow down a little because she got to get it together. I don't want to go in there just looking any old way. Fix your hat, honey. Run. Put that bun on the back. Run. No, those colors don't match us. No, those shoes don't look right. You got to run in your stocking. Run. Come on, we're going over to Nostrum and get you a toothpick. Come on, get you Hallelujah. Run. No, uh-uh. And baby, do you have any money for an offering? Don't be talking about it. Run. Not in church. Have yours. Praise the Lord. Take your checkbook. I'll put it in the bank before it get there. Hallelujah. But be all so ready. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We got to operate in the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. I check out everything. Praise the Lord. If anything's showing, we got to fix that. What does it cost me to make it look right? Maybe I should preach that today. I do thank God today. Praise the Lord. He is an awesome God. And I thank God for what He is doing in our midst. I want to draw your attention to the book of Acts. Praise the Lord. This is the book of action. Amen. And we want to turn to the 28th chapter of the book of Acts. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm just going to ask you to stand on your feet. I'm going to read this in your Harry Acts 28. Praise the Lord. Thank God for my strength. Praise the 
When you have it, just say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And the word of God reads on this wise. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called the Lighter. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them upon the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarian the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand. They said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom thou he have escaped, though he have escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. How be it? They looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. Bless the reading of God's word and may it be sanctified in our hearts that we may grow thereby. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'd like to use, taken from the third verse, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a vapor out of the heat and fastened to his hand. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to just use as a thought on this morning, shake the devil off your life. Shake the devil off your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for giving us the power to keep the enemy at bay. Father, we thank you for that hedge that separates us unto you, Father, where the enemy cannot penetrate. Jesus. Father, we're thanking you this morning for these, your people, have girded up their minds. Father, know how to be abound and know how to abase how to suffer themselves, allow themselves a need that you may interact with them. Father, we thank you today. Father, that you are taking us higher. Father, that you are blessing us exceedingly abundantly of all that we may ask or think. And for that, we give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, let's say it together in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord another hand praise. Shake the devil off of your life. Apostle Paul is one of the most notable personalities in the New Testament because of his lifestyle. Praise the Lord. Uh, the way the Bible describes Paul's life is similar to the life that we have Led. Even though Paul was born into the nation of Israel, praise the Lord, a Pharisee of Pharisees, he was a Jewish man that was addicted to the law of God. Praise the Lord. He lived it, he slept it, and he also acted it out believing that he was on the Lord's side. There are a lot of people that mean well, but they're not, amen, doing what God desires them to do. Mean well, praise the Lord. The Bible lets us know, praise our God, that where there is no sin, where there is no law, there is no sin counted unto the son. Where you have no knowledge of what you have done, then God cannot hold you accountable. 
However, the Bible also says that the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is going to not only shine on us, but light up the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that everyone will be without excuse. Praise the Lord. No one will be able to stand before the Lord and say, I did not know. God is not talking about knowing, amen, all the law. He's not talking about being perfect. He's just talking about, have you repented of your sins? Have you made a relationship with him according to his will? That's what he's going to judge. Because when you have repented of your sins, then you have changed your mind, which changes your ways. Once you have truly experienced godly sorrow, the Bible says that it generates repentance. And that repentance, because it's being done towards God in a godly, sorrowful fashion, God said that it will bring you into salvation. Hallelujah. So we know that if you're going to start off with God, you've got to start off with a pure heart. For only the pure in heart shall see the Lord. Apostle Paul, he started off as the Pharisee named Saul of Tarsus. Praise the Lord. Loved the Lord. Loved the carry out sentences and praise the Lord judgments against those that worked seemingly against the law. He didn't understand this shift and transition that Jesus had brought to the world. He didn't understand what grace and mercy was. Even though there was grace and mercy in the Old Testament, there was also the penalty of breaking the law. But in the New Testament, we have grace and mercy to fill in the gap for the lawbreakers. Praise the Lord. Grace is there to hold you on, to hold you out until your mind comes to the state of repentance. Then mercy says, I have pardoned your offense. All I need you to do is get the right mindset. And you know what to do. Now I want to serve you notice. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it sin. So now you're held accountable. Like it says in the book of Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, also the 33rd chapter of Ezekiel, it tells us, praise the Lord, if a righteous man turns from his righteousness unto wickedness and dies in his wickedness, his righteousness will no longer be remembered. But if a wicked man turns from his wickedness unto righteousness, his wickedness will no longer be remembered. Now that sounds a bit unfair, but God is a just God. Praise the Lord. Who can counsel the mind of God and the judgment of God? If God said it, that settles it. The Apostle Paul knew, praise the Lord, that he had to come into the knowledge of who the Lord Jesus was. Amen. No doubt if I was there, I probably would not have imagined that God would come down from his heavenly habitation to be a standing and a sacrifice and a propitiation for our sins. But because God loves his creation so much, amen, he saw it fitting to wrap himself in sinful flesh, sacrifice upon his, his life upon the cross at Calvary, amen, and be buried Amen. In the earth for three days. But he reminded his persecutors and his accusers that in three days, I'm going to raise this building up. One thing about our God, praise the Lord, there has not been a prophecy that has not been fulfilled. And praise the Lord, if it's still in the waiting room, it will come to pass. Because God said that my word shall not return unto me void. But it shall prosper yes. in the thing to where I sin. Once my word has gone out of my mouth, I'm going to make sure that it finds its place. Yes, God doesn't waste his time. Yes. 
even the weak things of God are stronger than the mighty. And praise the Lord. He even says, praise the Lord, that he takes the wisdom of man and confounds them even with the foolish things of God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we serve. There came a time where Apostle Paul had to realize that he was going to meet the very one that he thought he was serving. Praise the Lord. He loved the Lord Moses. He loved Father Abraham. But praise the Lord, he didn't know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes God is in our midst. We don't even know that he's dealing with our problems and our situations. We don't even know that, praise the Lord, that God has positioned himself on the right side, the left side, in the forefront and behind us, and yet we won't acknowledge his presence. One thing that I realize, praise the Lord, that God will make himself known to them that are open to know him. Amen. You shall know him, praise the Lord, when you serve him with all your heart, your soul, mind, and strength. Praise the Lord, you'll start to know him in the power of his suffering. You'll start to know him in the power of his resurrection. Amen. Just like Jesus was raised from the grave. Praise the Lord, we are raised to the newness of life. Amen. And Paul had to realize that he was on a mission for what he thought was his God. Yes, he knew Jehovah God. But he didn't know the God that was manifested in the flesh. Praise our God, and God found him on that road. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that he went to go get permission. Amen. Letters to go out and round up Christians so that he can bring them back to persecute them. Why? Because they were believing a seemingly false doctrine. But praise the Lord. God had to deal with the zealous servant of his. Amen. And he struck him down. You know the story. On the road to Damascus. He was anxious about doing the will of God, but he had the wrong thing in mind. God had to strike him down, but the fact of the matter is, is that there was some God down on the inside. Praise the Lord. Don't you count nobody out because of the way they look now. The Bible says, judge nothing before it's time, but when the Lord comes, praise the Lord, the Lord will sort him out. God said, let the weak grow up with the tears. Let the believers grow up with the unbelievers. Don't put them out, the Bible says. I'll do the sorting out when I come. Your job, praise the Lord, is to love them. Amen. And if you can't love them, then you ain't anointed. I said, if you can't love your enemies, then you're not anointed. I said, if you don't love your enemies more than you love your husband and wife, and your children and God then you have no relationship with my God I know I'm preaching this morning hallelujah because love is a hard thing it's easier to strike the man on the left cheek and let him tell you that I'll give you my right cheek and you'll be overzealous to strike him on the right side too but love conquers all fear fear is torment Paul was being tormented, amen, by his false beliefs. He believed in the law of God. God brought about the prophets and brought about Apostle Paul to let him know that no man shall be justified by the law. That if you want to keep the law, then you have to obey the law. But the criteria is you have to keep the whole law. That means, no, you cannot do 99 and fail at one. Amen. You've got to do all the law. And if you fail one, praise the Lord, all the other 99 have been wiped out. You've got to start all over again. Now you're really messed up because you ain't got no law. You're just wretched and undone now, but thank God for grace and mercy. Paul found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord struck him down on the road to Damascus. God said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And uh, Paul began to answer the Lord. And he answered in the affirmative, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That means that there was some knowledge of God down on the inside. Hallelujah. That's why you can't count folk out. Praise our God. It doesn't matter if you didn't hear them speak in tongues. Uh, you better worry about whether your tongues are on 
or, 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 or genuine. I'm preaching this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You don't got to love them. Because the more you love them, the more the love of God is going to embrace them. And praise the Lord, you'll be the witness. Amen. That they're no longer an enemy of yours. Because I heard them speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives them the utterance. But Paul had to hear from God. And Paul spoke from his spirit and said, yes, Lord. And, and God had to smite him in his face. Uh, smite his eyesight because uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, he realized that if Paul would have got up and looked in the direction that he wanted to go, he would not have gone where God had positioned him to receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. They, 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 they led Paul, praise the Lord, uh, amen, down to a street called Street. Uh, it's amazing that the street was called Street because uh, we're on the crooked path. We were born in sin and shipping in iniquity. Uh, but God can put you on the straight way, the narrow way, where few there is that find it. If you believe that you're on the narrow way, you need to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Because there's a broad way, and there is a narrow way, and few, amen, they, that find that narrow way. But Paul was ready to find the narrow way. Amen. It got real tight for Paul, but uh, whenever you surrender your heart, your mind, and your soul to the Lord, praise the Lord, you got a whole lot of room in God. Praise the Lord. You're free in God. Uh, you can move in the spirit and uh, you don't feel bound. You don't feel locked down. You don't feel, uh, amen, that you're uh, shackled down because you've got to live holy. There's freedom in holiness. Uh, for holiness without shall no man see the Lord. Uh, amen. God said, listen, you better follow your brother and your sister with peace and holiness. Uh, he said, you won't find Lord, oh, I know you're still praying about that relationship with your brother and sister, but you better get it right before God uh, expires your time down here. Amen. God knew that Paul was on a mission. God had to strike him down, praise the Lord, and uh, stand him up and uh, see that Paul would adapt to God's will. God had him go down to a street called Street, and uh, the word had already gotten to a man, the man and the priest called Ananias. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, when God has got you going in a direction, believe me, there's a word at the end of the journey that you can confirm that it was for you. Amen. He went down to that street called Street. Uh, amen. And when Ananias got the word that uh, Saul of Tarsus was coming down, amen. And he started to tremble in his boots. Huh? He said, is this the same one that persecuted the church in Jerusalem? Huh? Is that the same soul? Amen. That uh, probably was coming my way to get me. Uh, I don't know about him, Lord. Uh, but the Lord convinced Ananias uh, that he's not a servant of mine. And uh, I have ordained you, praise our God, to, to pray for your enemy. Lay hands on Praise 
of a God that is too hard for God. Huh? That when you abide in Him huh? and His words abide in you, huh? the power of God and the fame of God is upon your life. Huh? But you gotta shake the devil off. Huh? Get him out of your mind. Huh? Get him out of your house. Huh? Get him out of your heart. Huh? Get him out of your job. Huh? I ain't telling you to throw people off your job. Huh? I'm telling you to get yourself right. Nothing no more. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't so 
show. Hey, that's not. Once you say that, I think that's it. The Bible says it's better not to have known me than to have known me and turn your back. He said, listen, he that put his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the king. The moment that you say, thank you, Jesus, for he delivered me, my poor soul, you've been brought with the price. You just sold your soul to the Lord. And now, you're looking for all the blessings. And now you done gathered up all the blessings. And now you're using them to consume them on yourself. Amen. And now you're mad because those who you bless along the way, they're not blessing you back. And the word of God is not rich in your soul anymore because anger has blocked that. The Bible says give and don't expect that. You know, the church thing is a hard way when you're saved. But it's really the easiest way. Praise the Lord. My Bible tells me that the ways of a transgressor, they're hard. But if we confess our sins, our burdens, our hard ways, the Bible says that God is faithful and just to forgive us of those things. And look at God. God gives us a bonus. He said, in, in addition to forgiving you, I'll cleanse you from all. A double problem. I'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's beautiful. That is awesome. How often do they throw in a jacket with the skirt you you might get 50% off. They ain't going to throw the jacket. They're going to make you pay for it. But when you come in the kingdom, you normally come and strip down because you have to forsake the world in order to be conducive and conditioned for the kingdom. If you love in the world and trying to get into the kingdom, number one, you won't even try to get into the kingdom. Because it's contrary to your conscience. Because you think the kingdom is a waste of time. Because you think the riches are keeping you. But that's the deception of this world. That's why he tells us, what will it profit you if you gain it all? Oh, and I know some saints just say, mm, oh, if I had it all, I would bless every poor country. The devil is alive. You need to shake that devil off. Hallelujah. The first thing you're going to think of is everybody that wounded you. Uh -huh. I can't wait till they see the front page news. <laughs> They're going to be hating on me now. And I wish, I hope they lost my number and they bet not text me. <laughs> is that their email? You know your eyes are going down now. They're all in your spirit. <laughs> Your imagination is with you. I'm just going to buy me a plane and I'm not going to even land anywhere. And the moment you're making your reservations, the Bible says the Lord will require your soul. It's a terrible thing to have your soul required when you just got blessed. That's why you got to wear this world like a loose garment. You can't love the things of this world. No, I'm not the world. Not the things that are in the world. The pride of life, the lust of the eyes is not of the Father. All that stuff you got, you better have insurance of it on it, or your salvation is going with it. You better have insurance on it. Because if you love it, and God let the thief break in and steal it, your treasures are gone. Your hope is gone. And I'm sung a new song. My hope is built on just my class. <laughs> huh? They ain't singing the Lord's song no more. Praise the Lord. Come on, I'm going to help somebody. Say, shake it off. Shake it off. When you got one garment, how long do you stay in that closet? You don't even look to get it.
but when you have two dozen. Now you don't even want to go to church because you're late and nothing looks right because God don't mess with your eyesight because it ain't about what you look like. Huh? We got to be uniform. Praise the Lord. We do have sort of little standing, you know. This Sunday morning, we don't want the hoochie styles. Y'all know what that is? We don't want the brothers with all their chest showing. And don't wear them too tight. Huh? This Sunday morning. Hallelujah. We don't want our brothers and sisters to sin. We're accountable towards them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I only got 30 seconds left. Uh, I can just say, say, Lord, let that sink in. And I'll be done. But praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I ain't trying to see nothing. What you looking for? What you come to church for? I thought you were looking for Jesus. Come on, right? You got to come up for prayer for a crook in your neck. But if you were looking straight, Hallelujah. That's why when I used to run the church when I first got sick, I used to sit the missionaries were sitting up here. I said, right there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was trying to stay saved. Because these eyes will make you backslide. I said they'll make you backslide. Hallelujah. 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 If you walk by faith, see, in order to be blind in the kingdom, yet have your sight, you have to have the fullness of the love of God. Because everything you'll see, you'll see it from God's perspective. But when you just have this dried up, shriveled up, conditional love of God in you, when you look at something, you're judging it. Because all your eyes do is judge. There ain't nothing good in it. Hallelujah. I know your eyes and your eyes are looking at me right now saying, why don't you just do the benediction? I hear you in your spirit. Huh? We're going to get out of here. But what you rushing to? A drunk motorist? Huh? The thief that might be robbing your house and you show up just in time for him to kill you? You might as well tarry in the presence of the Lord. Huh? God will preserve it. He will preserve it. Paul shook the devil off. Hallelujah. Because Paul was loved as God. Because Jesus found him. And because Paul accepted his relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the demonstration of the power and favor was on Apostle Paul. They knew that when that snake attached, just like when we don't look like we in the spirit, we tell somebody else, she looks like she got a demon on her today. I said, praise the Lord, that she just kept walking. Well, you should have stopped praying. Huh? That's what you should have did. When the snake jumped on her, you should have stopped praying. Hallelujah. They said he must be a murderer when they saw the snake, but when he shook the snake off. See, that's why you got to shake the devil off so that they can see that you are anointed. When he shook that snake off, they said he must be a god. He must be a God. Saints of God, we've got to shake the devil off. Hallelujah. If you want to hear from God, don't hear it in the wind. we got too many wind folk. And everything is blowing in the wind. You need to get in the Bible. He gave us the Bible. You ain't got to be reaching for stuff and messing up people's lives. Hallelujah. 
If God got a word, then you should have got it from the Bible. You was reading the Bible and then it were placed on your heart. Reading the Bible, placed on your heart. And then you go to the word and then you show them the word. You ain't got to keep trying to control them. Your false alliance. You got low self esteem, and so you want to pray on the weak in Christ. Huh? Get you a word, because God going to cut you off. Then don't you know what the Bible says? Did you read? Did you so edified? Did you read where it says, if you cause any one of these little 90 year old babes to go astray, you might as well die a millstone around your neck and commit suicide. Because when I get to you, Make sure you burn and feel it. Praise the Lord. Saints, you want to be blessed? You want power and favor? Get the love of God. Be tried. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Be tested sometimes. Amen. When folk treat you bad, say thank you, Jesus. Oh, if you can say thank you, Jesus. That's powerful. That is powerful. Saints of God, we got to shake the devil off. Apostle Paul went to a martyr's death. But you know something? I believe that for everyone that is sold out for Jesus, it looked terrible, I'm sure, when John the Baptist was beheaded. But there was a songwriter that said they took the spirit from the body before he lost his head. I believe that. Hallelujah. There's a lot of bodies that shake after the spirit of God. But we thank you, praise God, that we have the spirit that's going to elevate us out of here. That's it. That's going to elevate us. It's the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you. That same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead shall also quicken and make alive your mortal body. You need the spirit of God to get out of here. And so you need to shake the devil off your life, in your mind. Just be normal. Just settle down. It's not all that deep to be saved. It's simple. The Lord is my shepherd. That's it. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. We bless God all that he has done in our lives and we want to keep the devil out of our business. He knows that his time is short. Praise the Lord. And so he's getting even busier. And uh, you can see, praise the Lord, that uh, he is getting busy in the wicked nations of the earth. And so uh, the devil is already here in America. He's been here. Praise the Lord. And uh, they say that the people should get ready for an attack. What you gonna do? You better be saved. That's the only thing you can do. And don't worry about where the attack is coming. Just be vigilant. Just be ready. So what you leave here saved? Isn't that what you're living for? You're living to live again. You're living to inherit eternal life. So why are you afraid? Because people are wearing school backsacks. Because they look Middle Eastern. I got some Middle Eastern relatives. Huh? You too. Out of one flesh, out of one blood, he made all nations. They are brothers. That ain't nothing but Israel and Israel. That's all it is. And we've got to love them. We've got to love them. We've got to love them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let the Navy, the Army, the Marines, let them do their job. But we've got to love them. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord one more hand. Please. This is our call. Amen. Praise the Lord. To salvation. Praise the Lord. Most of all, you have to change your mind about the way you live. Salvation is a process, a lifetime process. 
You will reach a milestone after you repent, after you fulfill the ordinance of being baptized in Jesus' name. Once you receive the Spirit of God, amen, the Spirit of God is there to give you power to witness. Praise the Lord. And that's a test whether or not you really have the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord because when the Spirit-filled believer is persecuted, they start to talk about God. They don't get upset and start fighting. They start talking about God. And so God showed, showed us that they, when they were persecuted in Jerusalem, they went out in witness with power and demonstration. Praise the Lord. That's what it does for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be born again, but you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because repentance and water baptism in the name of Jesus is for remission of sins. Remission means forgiveness. If you're forgiven, then you're in right relationship with the Lord. But you need the power to sustain you. To get to the end of the journey. And to get you out of here. You ain't got the power. I guarantee you, you're going to backslide before the rapture. So we give you that opportunity. It's only God that can do it. All we can do is give you the opportunity. We want it and we plan it. But we wait for God to give the increase. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, afflicted, sick, old for the power of the Lord is still the same. You, you won't leave it like you came in Jesus' name. Say, I won't leave it like I came.
in the name of Jesus. Cast them out in the name of Jesus. Lay hands on your mind. If your mind is troubled by the devil, put negatives in your mind. Negatives in your daily walk. Cast them out. Lay your hands on yourself. And God will bless you. All right, we're going to have our announcements and nutrition for the soul. We're going to call Sister Hart. In Jesus' name, we're we'll with the heart. Amen.
I'm not going to go into what he talked about. You have to see this in the court. Can't nobody tell it like this in the court. Amen. So I, I thank God for you and I thank God for that session. Amen. We ask that you continue to pray for one another, pray for the sick and the shut in. We ask that you pray for the leaders of this nation. We ask that you pray for the shepherd of this house, first lady and your family. We ask that you keep the mothers of the church in your prayers. Pray for those that you don't see today, that the Lord will make a move and uh, get them in the sanctuary. And if they can't come, just pray for them where they are. Amen. We ask that you continue to pray for the Robinson family, a special prayer for Lisa Robinson. Also, there's a special prayer request 